Welcome back, everyone. There are those in this country who would argue the criminal justice system is not perfect. In fact, they might say it's flawed, where there are those who commit severe crimes and are at times allowed to go free, and those who take part in smaller criminal acts and get harsher penalties. We've made it an effort here to highlight those inequalities on prime, and that's where we find ourselves tonight, in a story that took us to Tennessee after the Supreme Court refused to step in and commute the death sentence of one man who has served the majority of his life behind bars, counting down until his judgment day. In tonight's Prime Focus, we bring you the story of Kevin Burns, the thousands of others he represents, and the fight for clemency he and his family continue to wage every day. Thank you so much, Lord God, for your mercies and your, your loving kindnesses toward me and the love that you have shown the whole world. Parishioners of the Franklin Community Church gather every Sunday in this gymnasium just outside of Nashville. Most of all, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, and, and, and to share what you placed in my heart and my life with Franklin Community Church. Kevin Burns says he was called by God to preach the gospel. And for decades now, he's been waiting for a miracle. Thank you. Thank you for your compassion, Lord God. As his prayers go up, their tears come down. Their hearts weigh heavy for Kevin Burns, an ordained minister on death row. from an inmate at the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Hi, Kevin. This is Lindsay Davis from ABC News. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Today is the best day of my life. It's also roughly the 11,300th day of his life that Burns has spent behind bars. In fact, he's lived the past 28 years on death row for a murder he says he did not commit. Kevin, so many people who are in prison say that they're innocent, say that they're not guilty. Why should people believe you? I am not a murderer. I'm not who those prosecutors are, are portraying me to be. At 54 years old, Kevin Burns has spent more years inside the Riverbend Maximum Security Prison in Nashville than he lived as a free man. He was arrested in 1992. He says he was present at the scene of the crime that left two men dead, but denies pulling the trigger and refused to take a plea deal because he said he would have had to plead guilty to something he did not do. You actually were sentenced and received the death penalty. You never thought that that would be a possible outcome. I was traumatized, and at the same time, I felt paralyzed. I felt like I didn't even feel like I was breathing. I was just stunned. His story begins in this modest two-bedroom home, surrounded by nine siblings in West Memphis, Arkansas, a rural trucking hub with high crime and a poverty rate more than double the national average. He was kind, hardworking, and good in school. A good son, kind and respectful. Byrne says he had a good childhood. He graduated from high school, but chose not to go to college. Before his arrest in 1992, he was working at Shoney's, a popular chain restaurant in the South. In his free time, he was part of a rap group called SIR. All the kids, you know, back then were rapping and different type of musics. April 20th, 1992 was Kevin Byrne's 23rd birthday. It was also the day that would change his life forever. While the prison where he's incarcerated does not allow cameras on death row, we were able to talk to him on the phone about that fateful day. I think my friends are playing in a surprise party for me or something, so it's this suspense that I have, an expectation of celebrating my day, so I don't want no part of any conflict. Byrne said he thought he was on his way to a recording studio with Derek Garrett, Carlito Adams, Kevin Shaw, and two others to celebrate. But along the way, they made a stop and got out and walked up to a car in a driveway with four people inside. His friend Adams reportedly had previously had an argument with one of the men in the car and wanted to fight. I see Kevin Shaw extending his hand to me. I looked, and he has a gun in his hand. 
I asked, what's the gun for? Shaw so said, it's just to make sure it's a fair fight. Against everything, I made the most foolish decision I've ever made in my life. And I've come to regret. I took a gun. During the altercation, the men in the car were also robbed by the group of friends. Shots beginning to be fired. You know, there was no talking. There was no fist fight. So when I hear the shooting, I lay on the ground until the shooting stopped. In the end, two people lay dead. 17-year-old Damon Dawson and 23-year-old Tracy Johnson. Burns was convicted on two counts of felony murder receiving a death sentence for the murder of Dawson and a life sentence for the murder of Johnson. I regret the whole thing happened. I regret even being in prison on that day. But most of all, I regret that those two young men had to lose their lives. And now their families are suffering because of this situation. But I assure you that I am not a murderer. Felony murder is a rule of law that states that a person who commits any felony can be charged with murder if that felony leads to someone's death. In other words, a person doesn't have to kill in order to be charged with first-degree murder. All but two states have felony murder laws. In Tennessee, being convicted of felony murder means possibly being sentenced to the death penalty. When Burns was convicted of felony murder, the jury only had to find that he participated in the robbery, not that he shot or killed anyone. During the closing arguments in the sentencing phase of the trial, the state changed course, claiming that Burns was the shooter. Burns is frustrated that his attorneys at the time never challenged the state's narrative that he killed Damon Dawson, despite the evidence. We know beyond any shadow of a doubt that it wasn't Kevin Burns who did this crime. Richard Tennant is a public defender representing Burns for the past three years and is now trying to get his sentence thrown out. Eric Thomas is the eyewitness to this entire crime. And Eric Thomas said that the man who shot us, shot me and Damon Dawson, was the big man in glasses. A jury convicted Derek Guerin. And it makes clear that he, the big man in glasses, is who killed Damon Dawson four facts. We know this. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Kevin Burns hasn't shrunk. He's five foot seven, okay? We know his hair is my length. We know that he doesn't wear glasses. And we know that the murder weapon was in fact found at Derek Guerin's house. How can you be so sure that Kevin didn't even fire a gun that day? Kevin's, what he's always said is that yes, he had that gun. And what did he do with the gun that he never fired? He ran to Kevin Shaw's car and threw the gun in Kevin Shaw's car. Kevin Shaw goes to the police and he says, yeah, man, I, I, I did hand out guns before a fist fight. Please don't charge me. Here are the two guns that I handed out. I got two guns for you. They weren't fired. One of those guns is the gun that Kevin Burns threw in Kevin Shaw's car. Those guns, we know, weren't fired. Derek Guerin and Carlito Adams were both sentenced to life in prison, but have since been released on parole. Kevin Burns is the only one from that day still in prison and sentenced to death. Pray that God deliver me from this death sentence and from this prison, period. Kevin Burns, we call him KB. KB and I met now uh, about 10 years ago. I just uh, felt impressed that I should go to death row and uh, minister. KB got up and came and gave me a big hug and, uh, and said, I've been praying for you. Over that time, KB and I just have just built a very, very close relationship. Hello, everyone. How are you doing this morning? Good. That relationship led uh, to our church ordaining KB uh, as a minister. He's considered one of the pastors of our church. Good, I'm blessed, man. Today, the best day of my life. Tennessee is known as the buckle on the Bible Belt. Faith and hope run deep here. Starting with his father, who's also a pastor. I believe that God is going to deliver him. I love him. I'll always feel 
uh, hurt, devastation. I hope that he can come home someday. Their resolve remains, even though almost all of the options that could lead to Burns' exoneration have been exhausted. This past April, the Supreme Court decided not to take up Burns' case. Justice Sonia Sotomayor, in her dissent, said, the court's decision means that Burns now faces execution, despite a very robust possibility that he did not shoot Dawson, but that the jurors, acting on incomplete information, sentenced him to death because they thought he had. The court's failure to act is disheartening. With the recent decision with the Supreme Court, kind of when you heard the news, um, you know, what went through your mind? Uh, how, are you, how are you doing with that? I thought we were going to win. And so I had a deep disappointment, but I asked you, Lord, to let my parents live to see me delivered from this place. The decision to vacate or commute Burns' sentence now rests squarely in the hands of Republican Tennessee Governor Bill Lee. Multiple requests for comment on Burns' case to Governor Lee and his office have gone unanswered. An execution date for Burns has yet to be set. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.